good evening to all of you we are back again with another exciting talk in the acs science talk series i ajay jha on behalf of acs india team welcome you to today's session today we are pleased to have professor chandrima das with us professor das is associate professor in biophysics and structural genomics division saha institute of nuclear physics kolkata she obtained her phd from jawaharlal nehru center for advanced scientific research jncsr bangalore india and did her post doctoral research at university of colorado denver and md anderson cancer center she was awarded suzanne g common post doctoral fellowship for basic sciences in breast cancer research her research focus has been on the modulation of chromatin structure by selective epigenetic recognition by a class of proteins entitled chromatin reader and effector and a glimpse of it she will be giving us in our talk she has been awarded a ramalinga swami fellowship from department of biotechnology she is a life member of indian society of cell biology indian association for cancer research society of biological chemists chemical biological society india and member of the american society for biochemistry and molecular biology now i would like to invite professor das to deliver her talk over to professor das please so hello everyone Uh, i'm going to share about our laboratory research interests which centers around a specific family of proteins termed as chromatin readers effectors and as i titled my talk they actually perceive the epigenetic modifications very specifically and we are looking at different human disease perspective and how these chromatin readers work so the onset i would just introduce you to the chromatin landscape and you know that there are regions in the chromatin landscape which remains repressed and heterochromatinized where the gene expression is turned down or silent chromatin there are regions on the chromatin on the other hand which are known as euchromatic regions which are transcriptionally active regions and the gene expression from these regions are turned on so this is the nucleosomal organization where the core histone octamer is wrapped around by this dna and the histone tails protrude out from the nucleosomal structure nucleosome is the simplest organization unit and as we all know the histone tails are subject to post translational modifications there are certain key residues like lysine residues in the histone tails which get acetylated as well as methylated methylation of lysines can be monomethylation dimethylation or trimethylation depending upon the presence of this methyl moiety into this nitrogen and the epsilon amino group of this nitrogen and then there could be phosphorylation event which happens in the serine residues and not only these small functional groups but there could be proteins like ubiquitin moiety around 10 kilo dalton protein which again coordinates in the epsilon amino acid epsilon and nitrogen of the lysine and then leads to this ubiquitination event so um, we are talking about specific modifications but it is to be borne in mind that these modifications actually happen in a combinatorial manner in the histone uh, landscape and so these uh, entire landscape which is a composite of acetylation methylation phosphorylation ubiquitination needs to be interpreted at one point of time for the gene expression to be fine tuned and this uh, language is known as is uh, more popularly known as histone code hypothesis drawing analogy with genomic code so uh, as you can see in this slide that the there is a balanced state of the transcription programs which are uh, which are regulated by a cohort of this post translation modification this on the left hand side of this balance is the conventional repression marks like h3k9 trimethylation h3k27 trimethylation and so on and so forth recently identified marks like biotinylation sumoylation citrullination on the histone tails are also implicated in repression on the other hand there is the transcription activation fate which is also orchestrated by these histone uh, post translation modification like h4 lysine 16 acetylation h3k4 monoidy trimethylation etc so uh, all these are actually fine tuned or regulated by the enzymes which uh, are responsible for incorporating these modifications or removing these modifications into chromatin so in uh, in common terms we call these as chromatin writers or erasers writers are the enzymes like histone acyl transferase histone methyl transferase which incorporates these post translation modifications 
And erasers are the enzymes which remove these marks, like histone deacetylases or histone demethylases, etc. Our laboratory, on the other hand, is very much interested to understand the role of another class of protein called chromatin readers which docks onto these epigenetic modifications and interprets them in different biological contexts. So chromatin reader as such can belong to different family of proteins. They can be architectural proteins, as is heterochromatin protein 1. They can be chromatin remodelers, chromatin modifiers, or adapter proteins involved in diverse uh, biological functions like transcription, repair, recombination, replication, RNA processing, etc. So uh, I would give you an example how these chromatin readers can actually fine tune or reprogram the epigenetic landscape of chromatin. So let us consider this is under normal condition. On the left hand side is a repressed chromatin landscape and on the right hand side there is an activated landscape. So uh, there is a particular environmental stimuli which would activate several signal transduction pathways and herein comes the chromatin readers. These readers can dock onto these uh, conserved epigenetic marks and are instrumental in recruiting the writers or erasers into the cognate loci. And these enzymes subsequently remove or add on histone modifications. And uh, you can see the chromatin organization can change. So once uh, condensed region can become decondensed and decondensed becomes uh, condensed and Con concomitantly, there is changes in the chromatin transcription status, and the repressed landscape has turned into activated landscape now, and vice versa. So this is how the chromatin reader proteins are instrumental in programming the epigenomic landscape of chromatin. So these chromatin readers as a family can have diverse mode of recognition. So shown here is a histone tail, and a uh, on this, different histone PTNs are represented here. So chromatin readers can have one-on-one -on -one binding to these marks. There are diversities that happen because of the combinatorial mode of readouts when these proteins of interest harbor multiple reader domains. So shown here is a cis recognition uh, template where in the same histone tail, two different histone modifications are recognized by two individual domains of the reader in symphony. There could be a trans recognition module where again these multi domain readers are involved in recognition of intranucleosomal modification. Say, for instance, histone H3 tail and histone H4 tail harboring different marks can be recognized by two different domains of the reader of one protein. Or there could be internucleosomal recognition where two modifications ha happening in the two different nucleosomes are subject subjected to recognition by these individual reader domains. Reader domains can also be part of the multi subunit protein complex where uh, they can be in association with writers or in association with other scaffolding proteins, can recognize and functionally interpret the other complex chromatin landscape. So, for simplicity of understanding, I have given certain examples of some of these domains or the conserved reader domain proteins with which we work in the laboratory. One of the proteins is uh, the CREP binding protein CBP. It harbors a bromo domain, and as you can see here, it's a four helix bundle where the ZA and BC loops across uh, between these helices are actually involved in recognition of the acetylated lysines onto the chromatin. So this is a typical uh, canonical bromo domain protein. We have PhD finger proteins, a whole cohort of the PhD finger proteins with which we work in the laboratory. One of these protein, as shown, is transcription factor 19, TCF19. So this is simplistic organization of the PhD finger domain, where there is the C3H, C4 type organization, zinc coordination complex forming modules in a cross press topology. And uh, interestingly, the binding site of the histones or the modified histones are surrounded by the aromatic amino acids as marked in here for TCF19. So uh, most common binding partner for the PhD finger in the histone context is histone H3K4 trimethyl. However, there are other histone modification marks which are also recognized, like unmodified histone H3K4 ME0 can also be recognized by other PhD finger. So the bromodomain PhD finger have all a particular preference, but 
it's interesting to observe that uh, there is a diverse things that can happen when these domains are present in concert. Let us consider a particular protein like BPTF protein, which has a PhD and bromo domain present adjacently. So here, in this context, the PhD domain is involved in histone K4 trimethyl binding, and the bromo domain is involved in H4K16 acetyl binding. So they individually, they are doing their own jobs in this particular context. However, if you look at the CBP bromo domain, which also has a PhD finger adjacent to it, here the bromo domain is basically involved in recognizing its acetylation binding partner, as shown here, the crystal structure of H4K20AC. But the PhD finger here has a more supportive role. So bromo PhD finger together is actually involved in recognizing its, its common as the histone interacting partner in this context. I would I also like to add on to this, the definitions of writer, reader, and erasers are actually becoming more and more kind of diverse in the present context. Recently, we have been uh, interested in working on a particular protein of interest, which is known as UPR7. And here, this plant homeodomain, which is a conventional HTK4 trimethyl binding module, has actually evolved into having a completely different function. It has now acquired enzymatic catalytic activity, and it can actually ubiquitinate histone H2B lysine 120 and so has implications in suppression of breast cancer metastasis. So this, this clearly indicates that the conventional functions of the reader domains are actually broadening and there are more diverse functional outcomes in this, uh, in this field. So our laboratory is interested in three definitive functional uh, context or physiological context. We are looking at these chromatin readers from the perspective of tumorigenicity regulation, host pathogen interaction, as well as metabolic response. So uh, for today's talk, we are trying to focus more on the tumorigenicity regulation aspect. And as uh, Ajay already pointed out, our laboratory is intensely interested in the breast cancer context. And uh, I need not introduce breast cancer to this audience, but it is one of the most common cancer detected in Indian women, and it's a leading cause of the uh, leading cause of the uh, uh, of uh, like in the women. The cancer is one of the leading disease. The breast cancer is one of the leading disease here, and it's shown that around one in twenty-eight women are prone to develop breast cancer. Uh, so here you can see on the right-hand side the reported new cases are actually rising up in the context of breast cancer. In the immunohistochemical context, breast cancer has different subtypes. So here you can see here that the hormone positive, that ERPR positive breast cancer, which accommodates for about 65 to 75% of the breast cancers. There could be HER2 positive breast cancers, 15 to 20% breast cancers. Our laboratory is, however, focusing more on another subtype of breast cancer, which we call triple negative breast cancer, which is around nearly about 15% of the cases. It is important to note that triple negative breast cancer, and this is a particular uh, population statistics among the different countries. And in India, the TNBC cases are always on a rise. So TNBCs are very important because this particular subtype of breast cancer is most aggressive form and cannot be detected in the early phase. Majority detected cases are when the actual situations has progressed to grade three tumor levels. The other important component is uh, there is an early relapse of this disease. So uh, the conventional chemotherapeutic regimen is actually not uh, very uh, promising in the context of TNBC. So even after the TNBC cases are having the chemotherapeutic regimen treatment, they actually show relapse. And so there are more complicated situations that actually happen with this uh, subtype of breast cancer. So our laboratory is very interested to understand the function of uh, one of the chromatin readers, ring finger mint type 8, ZM by MD8. You can see here the n terminus of this uh, chromatin reader family member have this conventional chromatin binding modules, the PhD finger, bromo domain, PWWP motif, and the C terminal part has this mint finger. Recently in collaboration, we have been able to solve the extra crystal structure of the PhD bromo and PWWP motif, and we are in process of doing the four crystal structure with its corresponding histone interacting partner. So we first proceeded for identifying the histone interacting partners for Zimin date by uh, unbiased 
histone peptide library scan. And this peptide array scan clearly indicated that it has reference towards HTK36 dimethylation trimethylation marks as well as H4K16 acetylation marks. So these were detected in vitro, validated by other biochemical studies, and then uh, as well as biophysical studies, then we moved into cell. And you can see here the histones uh, 36 dimethylation as well as 16 acetylation could uh, co localize with the wild type uh, zinin date protein, but not with the PBP domain deleted protein. And again, we performed immunoprecipitation analysis, and you can see here these PBP domain deleted uh, constructs of the mammalian expression uh, ZM by ND8 protein can no longer bind to 36 dimethylation and 16 acetylation marks. And we uh, Always the question remained initially that whether if there is a one-on-one -on -one interaction for confirming that we tested the individual domains in vitro and observed that indeed H3.1 K36 dimethylation mark interacts with the PBP domain uh, and also the H4 K16 AC mark, but the mint finger domain does not interact with either of these histone modifications. So uh, we proceeded on this and functionally we actually uh, delegated to the regulation of a class of genes which harbored all transretinoic acid responsive genes and how D8 regulated their function. I would come to this uh, retinoic acid mediated regulation shortly. In another study, we have observed that uh, it regulates a plethora of genes involved in uh, the cancer pathways. Uh, and, uh, so it is basically a tumor suppressor protein. So if we silence this zim in the 8, there are a lot of genes which are involved in cell proliferation, tumor suppression, and then uh, cancer promotion, EMT, all these get turned on. So we uh, delineated the mechanism. So in this work, we showed that the epithelial genes are positively regulated by zimin date, and that is, that, is a that is a possible mechanism uh, through how the protein works in el elucidating this tumor suppressor function. We proceeded to the mouse models, and also here you can see here the D8 overexpressed uh, cells when grafted into mouse. The tumor sizes were much less as compared to the empty vector uh, expressing uh, these uh, 41 cells in the mouse grafts. So, indicating D8 in vivo context definitely has uh, anti tumorigenic function. So, as I was talking about the all trans retinoic acid responsive gene sets. So we uh, did a microarray analysis, and uh, we analyzed these gene sets in great details. And we observed that the uh, retinoic acid responsive gene subset and D8 regulated gene subset have a huge overlap. So uh, in both in the upregulated category as well as the downregulated category, there were substantial number of genes which were regulated by both these contexts. So we also did the biological analysis network to identify the common biological pathways and what are the genes and validated these networks again in our uh, laboratory setting and observed that indeed D8 regulates retinoic acid responsive genes. And uh, so retinoic acid, res uh, retinoic uh, acid or all trans retinoic acid is known as an important therapeutic agent studied in leukemia models as well as in the glioma models where it has been employed as a chemotherapeutic drug. However, recent uh, reports have started showing that retinoic acid can actually have effects in the triple negative breast cancer treatment context. And uh, so we observed that retinoic acid treated cells can, uh, can have alteration in their epigenomic landscapes. So this is the uh, global genomic changes as well as in the local specific gene expression changes we found that ATRA can actually lead to alterations uh, in, a, in, in these cases. So they actually fine tune or program several genes in the uh, human genome. So we uh, wanted to ask the question that what is the role of D8 in ATRA responsive gene expression regulation? So in this particular work, we actually identified that D8 is one of the important mediators of ATRA response in the cells. So when the cells are treated with ATRA, among the several factors, D8 is one of the key factors that gets induced and turns on several other ATRA responsive genes, thereby having important role in inhibition of cancer cell proliferation. So uh, D8 is a mediator of ATRA response in the cells. So uh, we observe this in the cellular context and again revisited these findings in a mouse tumor model where we found that the tumors 
which were injected with atra showed hyper expression of d8 by immunohistochemistry so d8 is definitely one of the mediators of atra response in the cell so these are some of the most common breast cancer chemotherapeutic drug there are anticyclin members like doxorubicin or epirubicin taxanes like paclitaxel docetaxel pyfluorouracil cyclophosphamide carboplatin something to bear in mind that these chemotherapeutic drugs are not the not one of the promising uh, promising uh, reagents for the treatment of the triple negative breast cancer so although there has been other uh, context where these uh, important chemotherapeutic drugs work but in the tnbc model there are lots of uh, negative sides of these conventional drug regimen and we we are trying to understand uh, so what is the problem in these cases so uh, to make things very simple the the receptors and the hormones the these chemotherapeutic drug actually disrupt the interaction between the receptors and hormones but triple negative breast cancer these hormone receptors are actually missing so now if you charge the cells with this chemotherapeutic drug they are in no way able to kind of combat this receptor hormone interactions and so in the first level there is a compromise in treatment of the cells with this chemotherapeutic drug so initially although some of the cases there is a response to this chemotherapy but in uh, in very short duration there is again a relapse of the disease and the overall overall survival rate in this relapsed cases is actually further lower down so this indicates that there is a need for new targeted therapeutic strategies to combat tnbc i would like to also introduce another aspect in this context so this is the context of drug resistance which is another very challenging problem in breast cancer more so in triple negative breast cancer so what is a drug resistance like so we know this chemotherapeutic drugs which are given to the cancer patients but many a time these cancer patients actually develop resistance and no longer this conventional drug regimen work so uh, this could be because of several reasons so these are some of the uh, pointed out reasons here so one of the most common reason is hyperactivation of the drug efflux pumps so there are several transporters like abcc abcd1 transporters which are there in the cells and their expression actually gets heightened in a resistance condition when the cell starts flushing out these chemotherapeutic drugs from the cell so that way the cells no longer are sensitive to these drugs further the drugs can also be metabolically processed inside the cells and this metabolic degradation of the drugs is another challenge there are recent reports which shows the ecm matrix the the cellular matrixes are also playing important role in the context of this resistant properties in the cancer so uh, this drug resistance is a challenge and so uh, there are ways and means how everybody intends to kind of sensitize the cells back again so that this therapeutic regimen can actually work so epigenetic modifications are one of the ways that we think could be very suitable mechanisms to sensitize the cells i give you one practical example here so here this is a chemo sensitive cancer cell population and the, then they are treated with a chemotherapeutic drug doxorubicin of 5 fluorouracil when we treat this the chemotherapeutic drug at a sublethal dose at dose which is less than ic50 and uh, you can ask the reason why this uh, sublethal doses are uh, used for this particular study is because we know that uh, there is always a kind of uh, kind of effort from the clinical side that the doses of this chemotherapeutic drugs should be reduced to uh, stop the off target and the high toxicity effects this chemotherapeutic regimen can actually have so uh, we have observed we have actually titrated the different doses of this drug and if you really go into sub lethal doses you will find that virtually we would select the population of cells which are becoming chemo resistant cancer cells that means in these particular cells as you can see here the the transporters that is the 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 chemotherapeutic drugs can be easily flushed out by these transporters i was talking about the abcd1 abcc1 or abcc2 the expressions are actually turned on upon dox treatment similar situations can also be visited upon 5 fluorouracil treatment 
so these are the convention chemotherapeutic drugs and they have a negative effect when you actually titrate down their doses not only the uh, these transporters but the emt genes cancer stem cell content all these things are actually highly elevated when you have a sublethal dose of these drugs so i'm showing here another thing which we started in the laboratory was the sphere formation assays they are this mammosphere formation when you have the control cells versus drug treated cells the sphere formation ability uh, actually found to go up indicating this is a more tumorigenic Uh, context here, as well as this is the cancer stem cell. We know that breast cancer stem cell have CD forty four positive and thirty four negative populations, which can be seen in this right hand side of the coordinates of the facts profile. And you can see here there is an increase in CD forty four positive thirty four negative cell population, again indicating there is an in induced tumorigenic potential in a low dox treated condition. So CAC content increases upon this. So as I was uh, mentioning, there are targeted therapies that are available so these targeted therapies could be in multitude manner and we are trying to think that epitherapy or epigenetic therapy where we can alter the histone modification or dna methylation landscapes whether they can actually salvage this kind of situation and uh, whether we can make the resistant cells sensitized again for these chemotherapeutic drugs so uh, in this context we are trying to work with chromatin reader proteins and see if they have ability to uh, sensitize the triple negative breast cancer so uh, when we treated is it a low dosage of doxorubicin we find that the expression of this chromatin reader protein z mediate as i was talking about is uh, highly induced however when we looked at its uh, distribution in the nucleus versus cytosol we observed that dox treatment as such led to substantial removal of the protein from the nuclear compartment to the cytosolic compartment so indicates that the protein is not in its best functional state because this is a epigenetic regulator and the nuclear component is what should be very heightened in their expression to do the job in the cells but as along with dox we parallelly overexpress them by nd8 in the cells we start looking at the again relocalization of the protein more towards the nuclear compartment indicating that now we are kind of safeguarding the nuclear pool and so now d8 functional component in the nucleus can actually be present to take care of the situation so uh, as i was talking however this uh, the dox treated condition if you look at that although d8 is heightened in expression in its in its uh, in its different target genes like cd44 gene there is actually a removal of zm by nd8 so there is overall increase in the expression which is actually shunted to the cytosol so the there is a removal of the protein from its cognate loci shown here is an example of cd44 gene so low dose of this drug can actually lead to cytoplasmic translocation as well as removal of d8 from the target promoters leading to the global uh, global functional state that we would be seeing here. so uh, then the substance uh, send the subsequently moved ahead and looked at the uh, the in the context of cancer so we looked at the cd44 positive 24 negative cells the percentage of cells as you can see here which had gone up in presence of the dox if you over express the rm by nd8 in these dox treated cells there the 44 positive 24 negative cell population again goes down we again did atmosphere formation assays in this uh, combination condition where d8 is high, hyper expressed in the dox to be completed background and the sphere formation rates are actually again going down here which is again indicator of uh, reduced tumorigenicity we did also the migration assays and again you can see here that by d8 in combination with dox you see the reduced migratory potential of the cells so overall the resistant that was actually generated by uh, the dox treatment is uh, is getting sensitized upon hyper expression of zm by nd8 in the cancer cells and so this particular uh, particular epigenetic regulator can actually be a saving uh, factor in this uh, particular situation so we went ahead and looked into the mouse models where uh, this doxorubicin treated uh, the mouse tumors if you look at as compared to that the size of the tumors where the d8 was hyper expressed alongside the treatment of doxorubicin was actually reduced not only that the population of the cd4424 
44 positive pinpo negative cells there were there were alterations in that as well as from these tumors when we went ahead and looked at the standard these uh, markers which are for the emp as well as for the resistance that is the uh, drug uh, drug uh, drug resistant genes we observed that a co-expression of d8 alongside with the dox treatment reduces the expression of these genes these are the multi drug resistant genes reduced in expression as well as the emt mdr genes emt as well as uh, the, uh, the the emt genes show the reduced expression of them when we have a combination situation here so d8 actually chemosensitizes the tumors in vivo context so now i would like to draw your attention to a, a interesting fact where if you look at a tumor cell as such and an embryonic developmental context like trophoblast formation you will find that there is lot of similarity between these two situations so as for example from the normal cell to the malignant cell we know epithelial mesenchymal transition or emt is one of the heightened things that happen very similar to the partial emt that you can see during the cytotrophoblast to extravascular trophoblast stage attainment then there are the mmp activation adhesion genes uh, uh, altering and the cytokine production all these are related to cellular invasion which are also seen in the context of the trophoblast as well as the cancer cells finally the immune suppression mechanism that is also a very important part of the cancer cells you will see that uh, that has a similarity between the develop, developing embryos and the trophoblastic situation states as well as in the normal cancer cells so we hypothesized or we uh, asked this question whether there are similarity in the epigenetic patterns that are there in the cancer cell as compared to that of the embryonic cell so this is something which uh, was quite uh like something which we wanted to test and see but it is not uh, that only us we have been involved into this kind of epigenetic landscape analysis there are other some of the few few of the other established other groups have actually started working on this hypothesis where zeb1 is one of the very important factor which is implicated in tumor density and you can see here the people have looked at the chromatin landscape at a zeb1 promoter and uh, so these promoters in the case of the luminal uh, breast cancer they show a repressed landscape uh, un unlike in the basal condition where cd44 expression is low which exists in a poised epigenomic landscape where the h3k4 trimethylation as well as h3k12 trimethylation these two marks of very different function k4 emitting an activating mark k27 emitting a repressive mark coexist and then uh, in more uh, high cd44 expression basal tumors there is a high z1 expression because the promoters are enriched of k4 trimethylation mark and k27 methylation actually is almost uh, not existent there so with the pro progressive tumorigenicity state this uh, alteration of the poised promoter state can be well appreciated so in our case i would like to draw an analogy here you can see this poised or bivalent genes if you look at it in terms of a ship which is actually in the uh, in in a, in the dock which has the k4 mark as well as k27 mark this is a bivalent or poised state and in the silenced condition you will find that k4 trimethylation mark is actually not there and so this uh, that docton condition can continue in the activated condition actually the 27 mh mark is removed and the k4 mh mark is existent and that's how the ship leaves the dock in other words activated gene expression program starts if i may draw a close analogy with the chemical uh, uh, chemical biology context here there could be a dynamic equilibrium between two states as represented by a and r here so this dynamic equilibrium is comparable to a poised state in the activated condition in particular one side reaction if it is uh, turned on to a greater extent is activated state and so the reverse is the repressed state where the opposite reaction is turned on so this kind of state changes uh, that we see in the biology can have actually uh, parity in the chemistry context as well so the question was this poised epigenetic landscape as we were seeing that in the chemotherapeutic drug treated condition we are getting turned on and so this is bad for the cells because some of these bad genes like emt mdr csc genes which were turned on and was bad uh, bad for these overall 
cells, uh, cell, cellular health, because the tuberculosity was highly turned on. So the context that uh, we would like to address in this backdrop is whether epigenetic reprogramming can again reinstate this repressive state so that the tumor promoting genes or oncogenes are again repressed or silent and we do not have uh, the, these uh, this particular bad genes expressed and it is uh, tumor suppressive in the that particular context so uh, as you can see here we looked at the uh, this uh, promoters of these uh, cd44 genes and these particular genes had high levels of k4 trimethylation marks but when you do the dox treatment as expected the k4 trimethylation being a transcriptional activation mark was going up and this leads to higher expression of CD44 genes. The 27ME3 marks on the other hand, the repressive mark was reduced upon DOX treatment, indicating the repression mark is going away. So this is an activated state, and so the pulse promoters are getting activated upon DOX treatment. So now we, as I was mentioning, can uh, ZMY ND8 as an epigenetic regulator save this situation and so we overexpress that by ND8 in a dox treated background. And now you can see that is exactly how we were speculating. The K4ME3, which was actually hyper, uh, hyper, uh, it was turned on, it was more enriched in these gene sets, like in CD44 genes, is now repressed. And the K27ME3 mark is now hyper, is now activated or it is more enhanced in these gene loci, indicating the repression landscape is again restored, which is good for the cells because CD44 gene is a cancer stem cell marker gene. And so this needs to be repressed in this context. So overexpression of D8 actually leads to removal of K4ME3 and promotes K27ME3 recruitment, thereby leading to repression of these CD44 gene expression. So now uh, the K4ME3 mark is B methylated by a very important demethylase that is KDM5C and uh, so the other uh, the enzyme is EZH2 which actually is involved in K27 trimethylation and in some in alongside we observe that uh, the increased K27 ME3 is because of the more recruitment of EZH2 into this chromatin landscape and a removal of uh, and, and also alongside removal of uh, K4ME3 was because of heightened recruitment of KDM5C, which is the demethylase for K4ME3. So these enzymes are actually playing critical role to maintain the POIS landscape. So we asked the question that uh, whether this tripartite complex that we are uh, talking about, KDM5C, EZH2, and ZMY and D8, physically exist or not? So yes, they interact as a complex when we do co immunoprecipitation. They all come together and alternative strategies of sucrose density gradient centrifugation also shows that there are distinct complexes where these three proteins can stay together in an MDMB231 background. And so they actually interact. So, uh, so we asked the final question, whether this uh, recruitment of this KDM5C and EZH to these two key genes, these two key factors onto these uh, CD44 genes, whether it is dictated by ZM by ND8 or not. And yes, although their expression as such was not uh, significantly altered upon D8 silencing, if you do not have D8 in the system, the recruitment of KDM5C as well as that of EZH2 is substantially reduced in this background. So uh, to, uh, to say that we have the ZM by D8 is actually critical in recruitment for KDM, recruitment of KDM5C and EZH2 to the target genetic. So to summarize, uh, here uh, we talk about this poised epigenomic state where we have this K4 and K27 trimethylation modification uh, in a perfectly balanced model. And so we have uh, the uh, modest expression of EMT, MDR, and stemness genes. A low chemotherapeutic strategy actually turns on these genes because the balance is now tilted towards activation state. And so EMT, MDR, stemness genes are highly overexpressed. And our epigenetic regulator, ZM by ND8, is actually able to uh, restore back this. Uh, uh, this particular situation by turning on uh, the turning off the EMT MDR stemness gene and restoring the repression landscape of them. So uh, this is my group, this chromatin dynamics laboratory people who have been extensively involved in this work. These are my funding agencies, and I also thank my collaborators for supporting me uh, through this work.